If you were to ask me what the most common failure point during an MOT test for Mark 1 Focus is and has been through many years, then this is certainly the subject. There is one feature on a Ford Focus Mark 1 which is completely unique. No other car has done this before and never will. I mean, you could name quite a few areas that are completely unique to a Mark 1, which is why it's such a special car. But um, there is a feature that is quite annoying, and if you've not encountered this, you soon will. And that is these lower reverse and fog light lenses. Um, yeah they are an interesting feature only something you can get on european cars because european cars had two fog lights at the bottom and the reverse lights were built in to the um upper rear light clusters on the american models the north american models um but the problem with having such lights mounted lower down as some of you may have encountered before is the fact that it's exposed to water because you have tires right in front of the lenses themselves i mean you couldn't get more in the firing line if you tried and as a result it is not uncommon on a mark one to see some water floating about in fact i played a game uh, a couple of years ago wherever i saw a mark one i'd always have a little glance to see how much water they've actually got in the lenses now it is quite a common issue for the reverse light or the fog light or both of them to fail on the MOT. Now the bulb may be blown, but they may not be. It may be corrosion inside the connectors. And we're gonna take a little bit of a look now to see what you need to be looking at. <laughs> it's literally just fallen off in my hands. Um, but as you can see, there's actually no corrosion on this bulb whatsoever. It is not abnormal to see the green stuff and corrosion around here because that's probably endemic of a, a problem in this connector. Now, this connector, as you can see, is really clean. The, it's dry, it's clean, but yours will have green algae in it. If there's been water in the cluster, then I'm afraid you will have the green stuff. And that is enough to basically stop the reverse light from working. It will just block the current and, well, you'll find out during the MOT if you don't already know. I mean, to be honest, a lot of people have actually driven Mark 1s with non-functioning reverse and fog lights for years. And the truth is it's a stupid, stupid place to put a reverse light. I mean, honestly, people just don't see it when it's working. Um, it is in, it's just in a, a very, very non-visible place. It's just not the place you would look at. You'd think it would go up there instead of being down here. So, and I've driven with a non-functioning reverse bulb for many years until I discovered that this was a thing and a common fault with Mark 1s. Um, what, I, what I will do is I will put these holders in the description. It may be the connection. Sometimes I think it pays attention to just push this tab and take this connection off the actual uh, light fitting but usually it's not the connection between these two it's the connection in here which stops that bulb from working and it can cause it cause these bulbs to blow so it may just be preferential to actually replace the bulb even if it hasn't blown because i'm not being funny filament bulbs can actually get become less efficient over time anyway as a matter of course as the filament burns itself because that's essentially how it works um, but what I would do is get some contact cleaner and a fiberglass pen to clean all the green corrosion away. If it's so bad that it still doesn't work after cleaning, you need a new one.
as I say, I'll put the parts number in the description. You'll just need to take off that electrical connector by pushing this tab in. You might obviously you're gonna need two hands, but you're just pushing this tab in as most of the tabs are. It's never this wiring. I've never known this wiring to break. Um, but with mine, if you are taking your arch liners away and throwing them in the bin like me, just make sure that this wire is not anywhere near this. This wire, by the way, goes in through the actual um a grommet inside there there's a grommet that leads through from the uh the side of the boot by the uh the vents but that is really all there is to it and um, just do the same on both sides and you will 99 percent of the time have functioning fog and reverse light bulbs after you've done it like this obviously this is all going to need a clean because it just gets i mean you can see the amount of stuff in here i cleaned this out a few months ago and it's it's not too bad but i haven't driven it much but it's it's absolutely filthy it is not uncommon for you to, you will have mud you will have clumps of mud when you do this job if you've never done this before because people just don't think about this sort of job until stuff like this goes wrong um so just a little um annoying issue on a mark one focus that not many people really pay attention to it is a stupid i think it's a it's a cool design feature but again an engineer's dream mechanics nightmare as they say you know okay it's all good for a car designer to put these cool lights at the bottom but this sort of stuff it's not good it's not good this is something i would recommend you clean every six months so you do this procedure just take five minutes to clean those light fittings in there and you shouldn't have an issue but if you do need new light fittings if they are so corroded and far gone those white metal tabs in there then you can get new ones it's as simple as that Well, unfortunately, it's actually not the end of this video because I'm actually about to do exactly what I've just suggested to you guys on my own car because I cleaned these about three months ago and both the balls are working. Well, guess what? My rear fog light is genuinely not working. I mean, this isn't some fake thing where I, I've basically gone and basically taken the ball back or disconnected the connector for effect. No, honestly, it's not working. Um, and the reason being, I'm just going to get this bulb out, is I'm going to show exactly the sort of corrosion. Now, this has no corrosion, and the bulb is intact. Look in there, what do we have? This is exactly what you are going to be faced with. I'm actually quite pleased I can show you this. And I'm just going to clean it up with my fiberglass pen, some tissue, and contact cleaner. To make it easier, I've actually disconnected it. Now there is some slight corrosion on the other side, but it's actually not too bad. Look how gunky it gets though. I am going to clean that a little bit more thoroughly. And out the connector, I'll just show you this, is absolutely fine. No problem with that. Just give it a, uh, a bit of a, a contact spray into there. This, yeah, you can see the problem. I'm going to take it inside and give it a more thorough clean because I suspect it's going to need a few things. Plus, I haven't disconnected the battery. You do not want to be shoving your finger in there to actually try and clean it when there's an actual current going through it. Right, after a load of cleaning, that looks a heck of a lot better. There's still some green at the bottom, but I've managed to clean most of it off and it should be good enough for a good connection. And this just goes to show that this car passed an MOT last month and they would have definitely checked this so and i checked it and i know it was working at least a month ago so in that period of time that's what it took for that to basically fail on me um but that is clean enough now to put back in uh the seal i mean the seal is the seal it doesn't do a very good job but you know it does somewhat of a job um obviously i when i emptied this ages ago there was some water in it and i clearly didn't um pay attention enough to this because it was working at the time but clearly some water had got in there and had started trying to eat at the metal but it's cleaned up well 
um, but the whole point is does it work well we're gonna find out soon I'll just uh, give this connector a bit of a clean up as well while I'm at it uh, it's all nice and clean I'll put it back on tight yep okay that's nice and tight put the o-ring back on and as you can see underneath here yeah. just um place it back over quite neatly it'll be squashed in once you twist it in and obviously put the ball back in quite hard to do off camera okay right Okay, let's, uh, let's grab the keys and let's go. Right. Front ones, rear one. Remember, front, if you've got them, rear. Bingo! We have light at last. There you go. Um, so as I've proven on my own car, um, it's not without its faults. It has a, a common issue that they all suffer from. And I'm glad that this advice video has been, well, a bit of me working on my own car for once and doing a job that I've done quite a few times. And I hope that this video shows the importance of keeping an eye on these lights because these will catch you out during the MOT time. I mean, it's not a massive faff. They do, the mechanics would simply clean it and it should pass through quite nicely. Most good mechanics will do that for absolutely nothing for the cost of the MOT. They'll probably charge you, I don't know, 50 quid instead of a 40 quid MOT, that sort of thing, if that's the only fail point. Anyway, guys, you take care. I will see you soon.